Right, uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for all coming along. Um, been the strongest man again. Uh, massive show last year. And I actually think, I think a lot of people think now this is going to be almost a bigger one because everyone is so incredibly good. And there's no Eddie who's current world's strongest man to sort of shit on everyone else's parade. Au contraire. Uh, we've got a load of world-class guys here. And I, I don't know, you reckon, was it four rep could win that? I think it's probably seven men. Who could win. For me, um, obviously, it's, 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 we don't know who's going to win. So we can't actually even begin to write the story ahead of time like we normally do as a sort of forecasted how we're going to tell it. And so like the, the build up to this comp has been pretty, pretty mental. You know, there's been loads on social media. With uh, Eddie not competing this year, it's kind of like opened everything up. Uh, so it was a really open comp. There was like, you know, eight guys or so were all looking to get on that podium in the top spot. So it was the first time in a long time that we didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, we knew all the events were going to be tight. But, you know, our kind of prep really started, the big mental game started 24 hours out. Uh, we had the athletes meeting, we went through all the rules and stuff. and. We had guys and you kind of like check in what guys are thinking and see how confident they are on different events. And you know who the favourites are on certain events. You know Hicksy's going to come out and smash the log. Uh, you know you know that guys like uh, Tom are going to be good in the loading, etc. So you do know these kind of things. You see him training and, and obviously competing. But you kind of get, try to get a feel for where people are at. And yeah, it's a lot of questions like, oh yeah, how are you feeling? How's training going? Uh, and it's always the same questions and all that. morning of the comp I tried to have a line just because these later shows are you know it's a long old day if you get up too early so I, I tried to sleep in as much as I could got some breakfast and then had some had some lunch and we were down at the arena at like 1.30 so uh, people probably don't realize how early we get down there uh, and there's a lot of nervous energy uh, especially for me I get really kind of like nervous with these comps always have done um, so I like to kind of just try and isolate myself a little bit um, and just kind of have a walk around and kind of do a bit of visualization on each event, know exactly what I'm doing. So I'll make sure I check out the kit, uh, nothing's changed, and, and go through my different strategies for lifting stuff, um, going with a full plan, you know. Uh, and it just makes me feel a little bit more confident. Uh, then after I've done all that, I just want to kind of chill out and, and joke around with guys and, you know, not, not think about the comp too much. about to find out. Sure am, you know, the athlete's got to step up in this first event and really bring the adrenaline rush and show that he is the one who's going to take all five events. Now then, everyone knows this. You pick it up, press it overhead. It's for repetition, 60 seconds, and it's 150 kilos. For pounds, that's for you, like 300, you 330, 330 pounds. It's really awkward. The handles are spread pretty far apart. It's going to be tough to take it to the shoulders. And when they put it over a head, they've got to lock it out. First event was log press, uh, 150 for reps. And I was actually looking, really looking forward to it. It had gone really well in training. Uh, warm ups felt good backstage. Um, and then, you know, I got out there. I was against Luke, which was good. So I knew he'd set a good pace. Stefan raised him up, bang, the down signal. And that was a war for Holland. <laughs> And I got out there and the first clean of the log, it just felt, felt really heavy, like sitting on, on my kind of chest and it took a bit of air out of me. So I got the first rep and then second rep, 
same thing, got up to the chest, and then as I started pressing, it just started blacking out. So I didn't get my breathing right or, or something went wrong. Um, so I stumbled backwards, just had to bail the log. Uh, and then from there, I was just playing catch up. So I knew I had to get more than three reps. Um, I knew that I, sh I couldn't have got the, the reps that I, I should have got, you know. So big disappointment for me that one, because I really wanted six reps, and six reps would have put me in good stead. Uh, unfortunately, I got four. So yeah, it was down on points, and that was kind of a big, big disappointing point for me. But you know, went backstage, and I thought, well, you know, that's done now. Uh, I'm just going to go out and, and put a bit of extra energy into every single event and try and kind of claw back the points on Hixie. <laughs> So I knew I had to be kind of consistent in this comp, so, you know, terrible start for me. Uh, I think I was sitting in uh, ninth place after the first event, which is horrendous. Um, so, you know, going to the next event, which is the frame carry, which is another good one for me. It felt great when I went and trained on the kit up at, up at Darren's place. And it's, it's an implement that I've only used in competition once before, but I knew that you have to go and train on that bit of kit because it's, it's awkward and you need to know, especially with straps that you put in your, your straps in the right place on it. Luckily, I was against Terry, and Terry's really good on frame, so I knew if I could stay in front of him, then I'd get a good time. Um, and, you know, we picked up, and we picked up at the same point, and then I just kind of just went into overspeed and just tried to stay ahead of him as much as I could, and I had a little bit of extra kind of aggression in that one, uh, just with the, uh, the, the fuck up on, on the log press. So, yeah, I went you know, extra hard at that one, and, and yeah, managed to get a world record, which is, which is insane. You know, it's my first ever world record, uh, so I'm, I'm massively proud of that one, especially after the start I had. I think, you know, it showed that Strongman's quite a big mental game as well, because you take a big, big hit like I had in the first event, and it's just kind of how you react to that. You can either crumble or you can come back fighting strong, and I think that's what I kind of showed. Good luck, Terry! Bye. 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 Now, you enjoyed that. Yeah, I just had to go all out on that one, take some chances, and I'm really lucky I was against Terry because we're quite evenly matched, so he kind of dragged me through. So, yeah, happy with that one. <laughs> I think somebody rang my missus and asked how quick I finished. That's what it is on past that finish. It's weird. Yeah, so you know, after the frame carry, it, it turned the uh, turned the leaderboard on its head. So I think I jumped from ninth up to third. Uh, the points are super close. So I had a couple of guys who missed out on the frame, uh, which meant I could close a lot of space. But I mean, I think at that point I was on 18 points, and and Hixie was on like 24. So it was a it was a huge gap. Um, I knew I had to keep chipping away, and I knew I had some results had to go my way. He was getting between us for me to catch him. Come on, Lloyd! 
To go into the deadlift, I was like super confident on this deadlift. Um, my deadlift's always been good, especially for reps. I managed to go and train on the kit beforehand. Uh, I felt really prepared for it. I knew I could do 12. The old legend, Mark well, Felix, went out and hit 11 beforehand, so it, it didn't make it easy. I managed to go out there and, and smash out kind of 10 reps on the bounce uh, without stopping. Took a quick rest and I knew I just had to kind of grind out two more reps. And first, you know, num rep number 11 went up good and then the last rep was an absolute grinder. So managed to get it just in time and yeah, 12 reps and get another event win. Back to back event wins are uh, yeah, hard to come by, especially in a field that good. So yeah, very happy. <laughs> Adam Bishop had an absolutely terrible start. I am um, I feel really bad for Bish. I had really high hopes he's coming into this. Bish is one of these guys that goes away, he works hard, he keeps quiet, he doesn't really post about what he's doing, what he's training. Every single competition he's come in and he's, he's, he's surprised me and he's surprised everybody. First event, I saw it, you know, he had a bit of a stumble, a trip, whatever, he dropped the log, it threw, his, threw him off his mojo, four reps, and bottom end of the table, shit points. Which, um, a position like that, it's really hard to come back from to win a show, but it's not impossible. But get this, he just won the frame carry, eight point something seconds, which is absolutely phenomenal, a world record. So I'm not surprised that, as I said, he, he, he's got his work, he's, he's, he's put the work in, and I knew he'd be the most improved athlete today. And then the deadlift, he's just gonna won the deadlift with 12 reps, out rep Mark Felix, which believe me, I've done it, but it breaks my back. He is a hard guy to out-rep, and Bish managed it, so fair play. 12 reps, he's won two events, and come bottom end, bottom end on one event. We've got loading next. Now Bish is super fast on his feet, super athletic. He could win this event. So if he gets three event wins, this puts him in really good steer going into the last event, the Atlas Stones, and I know Bish is amazing at Atlas Stones. I think he could really win the Atlas Stones for this, like, this group. So. I called it before this show, and I'm calling it now. Bishop to win Britain's Strongest Man 2019. And if he doesn't, Ooh. and if he doesn't, it's all down to that log press, and he'll, he'll kick himself in his balls for, for months and months and months about that, because he knows he could have done a lot better. Two events to go. Let's see. <laughs> The loading event was brutal. You know, it, we'd stretched out further than the year before. 
and going into the pickup trucks, which are slightly higher than the skips, it, it made a big difference. And that's why you saw a lot, a lot of slower times. And, and especially with the, the rep events before that people don't think about, you know, we had a, a, a reps for log, we had a frame carry, we were using your legs quite a bit, and then the max reps on the deadlift, you know, it really takes it out of you. So going into a, a loading event, you know, my legs were like jelly, uh, as all the rest of the guys were as well. Um, so I think I got fourth in the loading, which is good, uh, with both the Stoltmans and Terry just getting in front of me. Uh, and then also had another guy get in between me and Hixie on the loading. So I picked another point up on him there. Uh, and yeah, that, that gap's closing and suddenly, you know, you've gone from disappointment on the first event and I've got one event to go and I'm a couple of points, two and a half points behind Hixie going into the stones. <laughs> where my kind of mental aspects changed because at the World Tour Finals in September, my thoughts were, right, don't fuck up, make sure I get on the podium. Whereas now as going into the Stones, you've got just got to be attack, you've got to be relentless and you've got to go for that win. And that was the big shift I've, I think I've had this year off the back of Worlds last year is just attack things more and kind of believe in myself a little bit more, especially with Stones. Uh, so yeah, going into those Stones, it was, it, it was kind of all out attack mode for me and just go as fast as I could. <laughs> yeah, so going into Stones, you know, we had, uh, it, it was close between me and Hicksy. I managed to, there was quite a big gap between, you know, me in second and the, the guys in third. I think Loz was in third. Uh, it was maybe six to eight points between us. Uh, so, you know, all out attack mode for me. I think it was only two and a half points separating me and Hixie. So, yeah, I need someone to do me a favour and get in between us. Um, but I, I knew I'd been in, mo improved massively on stones. And I think out of everything I did yesterday, even getting the world record on the frame, I think I was probably most proud of my performance on the stones uh, because it's let me down a couple of times in the past. I've gone away, I've invested in it, you know, I've got paid money to get a container that I can put all my stones in and train them every single week because it's in every single comp. Um, so yeah, to go out and get a, a time close to 20 seconds is, is you know, what I really wanted. Um, I went out hard and it, it was unfortunate because with Phil getting himself injured, uh, it does affect you mentally. It was a hor horrendous injury um, and it was, uh, it was a real nasty one. It does put a little bit of doubt in your mind. You try and put it out of your, out of your head. Um, and it was, you know, it was little things like I got over to the, the platform and for some reason around the stones, it was soaking wet. The, mat, the, the mats were wet. I don't know what that was from, whether it was from Phil's, Phil's injury and they were trying to hydrate him or, or whether someone had spilt some water or it was like some of the guys sweating on the floor. I don't know, but it was really, it was really wet. And, you know, I had to kind of put that out of my mind and, and, uh, I didn't want to go, oh, Darren, can you clear it? I knew he would have. He would have cleared it for me, but I was ready to go there and then. I had my tacky ready. I had, you know, me versus Hixie. I just wanted to go. Um, so he kind of just sucked it up and went as fast as I could. Stone, threw that up, second one, one motion, third one, one motion, up to the 160. 
Um, had a little kind of slip sideways on it, just with the, the wet flooring, but still managed to one motion that nice and quick. And then it was just the 180 to do. And, you know, I could see Hicksy's little head popping up every single rep, you know, so he was still with me, the little dude. And uh, I managed to uh, just stay ahead of him, you know. And uh, I saw, he, you know, he, I'd put my <coughs> stone in the hole. His would slam in straight away afterwards, so I knew it was going to be real close. But it turns out I was a lot quick. I was quicker on the last stone. Unfortunately, it was only Hicksy was quick as well. He managed to do what he needed. Uh, so we only got one person between us. But taking second on that behind Tom. Tom's a fantastic stone lifter. He's built to lift stones. You know, he's six foot eight, huge wingspan just dunks them. Uh, so, you know, take second behind him is, is great. Um, but yeah, just not enough to, to sneak the win from Hicksy. Like the, the comp was was fantastic. I think everyone say, you know, it was, it was exciting to watch. And I know the organizers were wondering how things would go with Eddie stepping away, because he has been such a huge, huge thing for British Strongman. Um, but you know, I think we, we showed that it's, it's competitive, you know, it, it does make for a fantastic show, especially when you guys are nipping at each other's heels. And the show last night was, was amazing because we had a, a full crowd. Um, they were going absolutely mental. The events were great. It was quick running time. You know, like obviously it all went to plan bar. Phil's unfortunate accident. I hope he gets, gets, uh, gets better soon. Uh, but yeah, I think, you know, the crew did great moving everything in. Darren did great. And, and Brycey for getting the right events, uh, which is key. You know, I've got my place at Europe's now, I've got my place at Worlds, so I've got no stress in there, I don't have to wait. So it's kind of, you know, all out trained towards that. So I'll probably be back in the gym tomorrow, uh, do some lower body work, um, probably do three weeks of kind of lighter training, uh, and then I'll start an eight week prep for Europe's. I'm getting, world strongest man, I'm getting in that top five, I'm eight, top 10, sorry, I'm making, the, uh, I'm making the final this year. After two years where I've missed out really closely on stones, uh, yeah, I'm making it this year. Like, that's, that's my number one goal now for the rest of the year because it's, it's been a tough pill to swallow every time I watch it back at Christmas uh, and you know, just see that I'm just missing out and I should be in that top 10. I think I've proved that in my last two comps that I've done. So yeah, that's, that's all I'm going for.